worship your name in this place, God. We magnify your name in this place, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy, you're worthy, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Good morning, church family. Good morning, good morning. Those that are watching by social media, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is he who has made us, not we ourselves. Come on and lift him up. He is great. He is great. He is great. And because he is great, we are great. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Glory 
it to your name, God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, we bless you in this place. We magnify you. We thank you for this day, God. We thank you for healing, deliverance, salvation, God. Your grace that is sufficient in time of weakness. We thank you for building us up, God. We thank you for the tearing down for the new hallelujah. We thank you for the evolution, hallelujah, for the growth, for the expansion, God. We bless you for this house. This is a house of love. This is a house of correction. This is a house of deliverance. This is a house of healing. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for unity and strength. We thank you for this community. We thank you for being the lights in it. We thank you for sowing seeds of love and light. We bless you for being our hope, God. Lord, your word says, happy is he whose hope is in the Lord. God, we bless you for that. We thank you for the dominion and power that you have placed in us. We thank you for walking it and embracing it, knowing, God, that is who you have called us to be in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless you for this great woman of God. Hallelujah. The greatness that is in her that overflows unto your people. We thank you for not letting up, God, for your glory, that you might be glorified through your people in this land, God. Lord, we thank you for being a great impact through you, God in our homes, on our jobs, in this community, everywhere our feet tread. God, we bless you for the musicians, for the praise team, for stirring up the gifts, God, that is within your people, for breaking the strongholds and the shackles, God. We thank you for this mind being us that was also in Christ Jesus. Lord, we love you and we bless you and we honor you this day. We pray for the woman of God that's gonna bring forth your word of life that will change us today and we'll never be the same. We thank you, God, for blessing us that your peace that passes all understanding, God, will keep our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. We love you, we honor you, and we bless you. Come on and bless the King of King and the Lord. Help 
to declare that with me. Sing that. Sing, Lord, you're mighty. 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 You said 
So great I am, you are. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Calling on you, come and fill me up and leave no space at all. My heart is open and I am determined to be consumed by you.
because we didn't have to be here. We didn't have to have the activities of our limb. All of us have been to the cemetery multiple times in the last couple years. Could have been us. Woo. We've got to learn how to stand in the presence. That's on our knees and our mind. <laughs> Bow down. What's the next play? What's the what's the plan? What's the word? What's next, God? Woo! Thank you, thank you, praise Him. Ahmad and Makaya, yes, God. Nothing like the presence of God. Don't ever 
try to do nothing unless he show up. Oh, God. Yes, sir. So, so, so I couldn't preach at 930, so we got a preacher at 1030. <laughs> Amen. The evangelist. Amen. The revelator. Amen. When she on, she on. When she on, she hot now. So we're going to bring forth evangelist Kathy Thornton. Amen. Put your hands together. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to ask everyone to turn to Jeremiah 1. Thank you, Father. Jeremiah 1, 9 and 10. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Jeremiah 1, 9 through 10. Acts everyone to bow your heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the word that you have sent to us, Father. Have your way in this place. Have your way in us, God. We open our mind and our hearts to receive from you. And we bless you in Christ's name. Amen. Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a prophet, and he was the son of Hilkiah of the priests that were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, the king of Judah, in the 13th year of his reign. I'm going to skip down to verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. So um, the verses I just read is really giving a background on who Jeremiah is. Um, Jeremiah means spiritual faith, demanding that all religious thoughts be true in a in observance of divine law pretty much the logical process by which God manifests so this is Jeremiah he grew up in the village of Anatoth a few miles northeast of Jerusalem and Anatoth represents the negative side of answers to prayer the working of the law to fulfill thoughts of lack and of error rather than positive thoughts of good so even though Jeremiah was a prophet and he was located in the land of Benjamin, um, he was a prophet, but he pretty much was on the negative side of prayer. Just because we have an office doesn't mean 
that we don't have our own personalities and our own things that we have to deal with in our own self. And so God was telling Jeremiah, I'm calling you. And Jeremiah began to give all the reasons why um, he was not qualified to go. He said, I am a youth. And sometimes when the Lord calls us to do a certain thing, we begin to give our reasons why we are not qualified to do what he has called us to do. And Jeremiah, he was like, oh, Lord God. He pretty much was saying, um, no, God, let me tell you why I can't do what you have told me to do. I'm, first of all, I'm young. And second of all, who am I to go and speak to these nations? They're not listening to you. Why would they listen to a youth like me? But God answered back. And we know that these are the discussions that go on in our own selves. Jeremiah is a representation of us. And this is a representation of the conversation that Jeremiah is going back and forth with God when we know we have been called to do something, but yet we still are trying to rationalize within ourselves why we are not able, capable, certified, called, um, good enough, you know, to do these things. And sometimes we do have those excuses. I can't do it, I'm in school, or I need to go to school, or I don't have the money, or I'm too young, or I'm too old, I'm too, I'm not able to do what you have called me to do. But God begins to say what well, says the Lord okay. said unto me, say not I am a child, because when we're saying I am, we are talking about God. So God is, so God is telling us, don't say I am a child. Don't limit me based on who you have, based on who you think you are. The I am is limitless. The I am is boundless. The I am is timeless. It is ageless. It is spirit. So God can, God cannot be limited unless we limit him in our own minds and in our own thoughts. So he's telling him that before I formed thee in the belly, and that formed is the same form when God formed Adam. The basic meaning of this verb is to shape or form. It implies a degree of craft, craftsmanship. Before we were brought into physical form, we existed in, and was known by God. So God was saying in here, before I formed you in the belly, I knew thee. I knew you. Before you were formed in your mom's womb, I knew who you were. Before I called you into this earth, I knew who you were, and I have already made plans for you. And I'm calling you into this for this specific time, and attached to you is this purpose. So don't tell me you're not able to do this purpose when this is the purpose for which you have come. This is what you are here for to do. So we can't limit God based on the things that we are going through, the things that we think about ourselves. We have to be open to the fact that if God is telling, if this word is coming to me, then this word is for me, this word is for me to do. Right. He says, be not afraid of the faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. And a lot of times when we think about faces, we think about don't be afraid of what other people say. But really, if we're listening to what other people say, that's because there's something in us that is agreeing with what they're saying. So he's saying, don't be afraid of the faces. Don't be afraid of the outward manifestations. Even though those things that you're saying are true because Jeremiah was a youth. So even in the natural, if it's true, doesn't mean we are limited because we don't, um, this is not a natural work. 
Jeremiah was young in the natural, but his work was not a natural work. His work is a spiritual work. And so even though the things that we say are true or the things that we may have done, the things that we try to disqualify ourselves with, they're true. But if God called us before we did anything or before anything was ever done for to us, then he has already decided this is what you're going to do. He says, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, you're going to speak it. You're going to do what I have called you to do because why? You belong to me. I've created you. I formed you. I put you in your mom's womb. I have done everything. So you're going to do it. So the, verse 9 says, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down, and to build. So the Lord was telling Jeremiah, he put forth, well, he put forth his hand. Jehovah's hand touching Jeremiah's mouth represents the expression of divine law in terms of cause and effect. Jeremiah understood this law, and when, Je and when Jehovah touched his mouth, he knew he could speak with authority because God's hands represents ability, the doing of things. Once God, be once God begins to tell us, first of all, we have been established in identity, we know who we are. We know whose we are. We know that we have been called for a purpose. And now that we know that, God has put his word in our mouth. That word is not just a word of, I'm, I'm just saying something. That word is, I have given you this to speak. Therefore, the power and the authority and everything that comes with that word, when that word goes out, that word shall accomplish that in which I please. It's not just saying a word. It's you're speaking as God. And we know that when God speaks, it is already done in the earth. So once, once Jeremiah began to understand his, ident his identity, and then he began to understand his authority. He says, see, I have set this day, I have given you the understanding now, over the nations and over the kingdoms. And we may say, well, Jeremiah is a prophet. I'm not a prophet, so this word is not for me. But I say this word is for everyone because God has formed everyone and he has created us all. And he has given us a word to declare over our own lives. So he's saying, I have set thee this day over the nations and over the kingdoms. All those negative um, states of consciousness, all those things that are telling you that you have, that you are not able to do something, that I, what I have called you to do, all those things, I have set you above those things. So now that you have your identity, you have your authority, you have understanding, now it is time to begin to pull up those things that no longer serves you. Begin to pull them up and to root them out, meaning to remove a plant from the soil. These are the negative states of consciousness that the, that the children of Israel were working in because, you know, again, they were worshiping idols. And so God was calling them, calling Jeremiah to them to give them a warning that it's time to um, let go of your idols. It says, moreover, the word, verse 11, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. And the rod of an almond tree, in that area, almonds were, were um, very common, and they were known for those things. So the rod of an almond tree, or the branch of an almond tree, noted that there was, um, 
there was an early bud. This tree budded early. So God was saying, okay, so now you're perceiving well. Now you have understanding. Now your vision has changed. You're able to perceive and to understand what I'm saying. He says, then the Lord said unto me, thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. Yeah. So God was telling him the, um, the almond tree that was ready to bud God is watching over us, and that word, he is ready to perform when we, when we declare it, when we speak to those negative states of consciousness, when we begin to tell ourselves and look within and tell those things that, have, that we have been worshiping, the doubt, the fear, the disappointments, the insecurity, all those things that we have, we, don't, we really don't say we worship them, but anything that causes us to not walk in the knowledge of who God has called us to be is an idol. An idol is not always gold or money or people. The items are states of consciousness that we declare we are and we don't begin to work, walk in who God has called us to be. So if it is fear, Fear is an idol. If you don't believe, doubt is an idol. Whatever it is that you have set above the word of God is an idol. And he is telling um, Jeremiah, it's time to pull it up. Yeah. And it's time to root it out. He has sent his word to us. He has given us his power. There is no excuses. There is no reason why we can't do what he has called us to do. Yeah. And the word of the Lord came unto me a second time. What seest thou? And I said, I see a seething pot, and the face thereof is toward the, the north. These verses is talking about, well, when we think of seething pot, if you think of like a pot of grits, and it begins to boil, and it starts to boil over. God, in this, in this was, God was telling them, there's an enemy in the north. And we know that the enemies were, they were punished by God, but they were also used by God in order to put um, Israel in the place and in the alignment of where they should be. Every time they got out of position and began to work with idols, then God would use the enemy. And so he was telling, I see a seething pot and the faces of the north pretty much telling them, there's an enemy that is going to come and overtake you if you don't begin to pull up, to root out, and to, and to pluck up. Because the things that you are now worshiping, the things that are now satisfying you, it's getting ready to overtake you, and you're going to become a slave to it. It will no longer satisfy you. Now it's something that is a burden to you, and it will spill over. Like sometimes it's one area, and if we don't begin to work in that area, it's going to spill over just like when the pot is boiling and the water or whatever it is begins to come out of the pot. And he says, then the Lord said unto me, out of the north an evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north, said the Lord. They shall come and they shall set everyone his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem, blocking our peace. And against the walls thereof round about and against all the cities of Ju Judah. And I will utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness, who have forsaken me and have burned incense unto the other gods and worship the works of their hands. Now, when we think about this and we think about a loving God, a, grac a gracious God, and a merciful God, and he is. But there are also laws set in, in place, laws of cause and effect laws of faith so it's not god that is doing these things it is us bringing these things upon ourselves because of the idols that we have so he was telling them tell them to pluck uh, pluck it up tell them to pull it out and tell them to root it out or these judgments will come upon them and like i said before jeremiah was um 
was born out of Anathoth, so his 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 warnings were fairly strong, but he knew he had the backing of God when he said these things. And so as just like God was telling them that it's time to clean, get rid of the idols, it's time to begin to pluck those things up. Those That word belongs to us as well. It's time to pluck up the nations and the kingdoms, the things that represent the, the um, negative states in our consciousness. And it's time for us to deny the error so that it may be erased from consciousness. We no longer identify ourselves with anything in this world. Instead, we identify with our Christ consciousness. It's time for us to identify with who made us and who created us, and that is God. And when we begin to identify with God and begin to walk in what God, when we align our will to his will and we begin to walk in that will, then the opposite of Anathoth, which is the opposite, but the opposite of what, um, God was saying in these verses will come true, but we have to do the work. When God has empowered us, that's why he told Jeremiah at the beginning, I have empowered you because it takes power. He has given us everything we need. The power in our identity, it is essential because there's a work. When you begin to pull up these idols, they're not going to just surrender um, easily. It is a work, but we have been empowered. And another thing about the almond tree is it buds fast, but it bears fruit slow. And so we have to continually pluck up, pull up, root out, even when it doesn't seem like there's a manifestation because we're not working by what we see. We're not working by what the faces are. I keep giving, but it seems like I'm not, I'm not where I ought to be. I keep coming to church, but it seems like, no, you got to keep pulling, keep plucking, keep building up, keep coming, keep giving, keep sowing, keep loving, keep forgiving, keep doing all those things because we're not, we're working, walking by what God has said. It says the word of the Lord has come unto him. And when the word comes, it comes with a, with, a, with a power and the anointing to fulfill whatever God has called us to do. So begin to pluck it up and pull it out and look at those idols and know that God has given us. He has ordained us. He has set us apart for this work and continue to work with patience and with love. It, it may not look like it's working, but it's working because God has already worked the work through us. We're just the, we're the body. We, we are the ones who God is going to use to do the work. God is not going to do it outside of us. He sent his son in the form of man, which is us, to do the work. He is doing it through us. And so verse 17 says, Thou therefore gird up thy, lo thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. You can't go in afraid. We got to go in knowing who is backing us, that we have the full power of God, his anointing, his love, his mercy, his grace, his ability, his strength, all the 12 powers that we learned about. We have that backing us because when we go in to try to speak to these things within us and we don't have any power and we don't know who we are, they will drive you crazy because they're gonna when we start speaking to them they're gonna start speaking back so we gotta know who we are don't be confounded don't have any fear because god is not gonna confound them but we can we are confounded within ourselves when we don't know who we are for behold i have made thee this day a defense city and an iron pillar and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. 
So God has fortified our minds. In and, and other, and other words, like verse 17, it says, gird up thy loins, gird up your mind, gird up our minds with the word of God. Because then we become a defense city when, when the, when the um, enemy begins to try to attack. No, we know who we are. We have an answer to give back. We have been girded up, and nothing can prevail against us, not even the princes, not those who have power, not even the priests, not those that are religious, and not against the people of the land, not those those um, error thoughts that we have. Nothing can prevail against us when we fortify our minds with what God has said. Verse 19 says, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, says the Lord, to deliver thee. And that's something we can remember when, we're, when we are having those challenges. They will fight back. God says they're going to fight back. But they will not prevail. Why? Because we are already victorious through Christ. And so when we begin to say what God says and act on those things, knowing that we have the backing of heaven behind us, we cannot fail. We will prevail, for I am with thee, says the Lord, to deliver thee. I am is whatever you need me to be. That is what I am. I am all. I am, I was, I will be. I will be again. I will be to the eternal power. God all, is always with us to fulfill his word. But we have to become in alignment with his word and what he has said about us. And when we begin to walk in alignment with God, we can pluck up and we can pull out and we can root out. And once we do those things, then we can begin to build and to plant. And we build on the foundation of who God has says, who God says we are, and we begin to plant the righteous seeds that they may grow thereby. So I just want to encourage all of us that the word of the Lord has come to us. Now, what are we going to do with it? Because now we are responsible for that word because the word is going to work. The word is working, but will we work with it or will we work against it? But God is saying we will do what he has chosen us to do. But how are we going to do it? Are we going to do it willingly or are we going to do it kicking and fighting? And then we have to be overtaken with, with those seeds and pots and our peace be disturbed because we have all these idols. He's telling us to pluck them out now. I see the seething pot, but the pot is not running over. We have time. He sent. He would not put us in a place where we're overtaken and we don't know. Yes. He is saying, I have given you my word. I have called you. I have told you who you are. Now begin to pluck up and pull out because I want to establish myself in you. And I want to do the work through you because that is what I put you here for. My pleasure and for my glory. I have given you everything that is necessary. I have given you the essentials. And I, I do this because I love you. And I would not let anything come upon you that I have not given you the power to have the victory over. Even when you mess up. Even when you go astray. Even when you do the exact opposite of what I told you to do, yeah. I have already made provision yeah. through my son. Yeah. Now, you'll come back battered. You'll come back broken. But I will heal you. Yeah. But who wants it that way? I'd rather take the easy way. I want the other way. 
But we have to just be mindful and know that God is always sending us a word. As we can see this morning, we had a, everybody had a word this morning to give. Even the commercial had a word this morning, we had, and we were able to take that in. So like Pastor Donald says, look for God. God is always sending us his word. Amen. Amen. Evangelist Thornton, the essential. And now we will um, have our offering. You can continue to stand. Our different ways of giving is through our um, Giblify app, and that's the Antioch Life Enrichment Center. Through our debit or credit card in the card room with Prophetess Jones. Um, in the basket, our usher is going to come down. And you can use your cash app as well, dollar sign, all caps, A-L-E-C, lowercase E-N-T-E-R. You can also sow into our pastor through her cash app as well. It is dollar sign, all lowercase, I live, 1968. Or you can give it through the Givelify app in your debit or credit card or to her personally. Given, they have returned their tithe, they have given their offering, and we will pray over our offering. Father, we thank you, God, for the hearts and the minds to give, God. We thank you, God, for it is a key to the kingdom, God, to increase us, God. And we thank you, God, for returning all that is due to you in this house, God. We thank you for returning it 100-fold to the hands that have given. In Christ's name, amen. And now we will have our scriptural reading, and that's Job uh, verse 32, chapter 32, verses 18 through 19. This is the image well described by Job, for I am full of words, and the spirit within me compels me. Inside I am like bottled up wine, like new wine skins ready to burst. We are the seed of everything that God would ever bring forth. In the outworking of his purpose, there are constantly new horizons, new workings, new temples, new forms, and new structures, new workings of his spirit. You may be seated for announcements. Thank you to each and every partner that is here with us in the sanctuary on today. Thank you to um, those of you on Facebook Live for joining us on today. By way of announcements, we have a pop-up library everywhere, and it is every first and third Thursday of the month at the Monitor Enrichment Center parking lot, located at 600 South Monitor Drive from 3 to 5 p.m. And that's every first and third Thursday of the month at the Monitor Enrichment Center parking lot. Dormney Medical Center is hiring full-time. 
If you would um, like to apply, please visit their website at www.dormanymedical.org. If you have any questions concerning um, the application process, you can see um, Sister Stephanie Brockington. Wiregrass Technical College is offering free GED classes on the Bee Hill County location. Um, that's Monday through Friday in person or online. If you are interested or know anyone who need that um, those classes, please call 229-468-2272. Alec announcements. Let's kick it. That's the Power Zone. They will meet April 8th at 1 p.m. at the Willow Park um, to play kickball. Everyone is welcome. Pastor Prather will be um, speaking at Rehoboth Fellowship on Friday, April 7th at 6 p.m. And that's with Pastor Harper in Osceola, Georgia. Pastor Prather's fourth pastor anniversary is April 15th. That's April 15th through the 16th. On Saturday, April 15th, we will have dinner at Cherokee Rose at 6 p.m. And that's located at 330 Osceola Highway here in Fitzgerald. Everyone will be responsible for their own meal. On Sunday, April 16th, we will be here in the sanctuary at 10 a.m. Everyone is invited. And other announcements, Elder Pruitt would like to see everyone at the service today. Services offered to our community through Alec is our food bank and our clothing bank. Our food bank is available daily or in person every third Saturday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. For more information, you can call the church 229-423-7678 or you can contact our director, Sister Juanita Cooper at 229-345-0033. Our clothing bank is available daily as well or in person every third Saturday from 9 a.m. until. For more information, again, you can call the church or leave a voice message at 229-423-7678. Or you can contact Sister Antavia Blunt, our director, at 229-425-8950. Power Zone Youth Connection. They meet every second and fourth Saturday at 1 p.m. All youth and young adults are welcome. Every Sunday at 10 a.m., it is our awakening service, and we are here in the sanctuary or virtually online through Facebook. If you come in the sanctuary, we do ask that you wear your mask. We are practicing social distancing. Every Wednesday at 6 p.m., it is our midweek motivation, and we are here in the sanctuary as well or via Facebook Live. Every Saturday at 11 a.m., we have prayer here in the sanctuary. Please stand to be dismissed. Father, we thank you, God, for continuing to love on us the way that you do, for continuing to provide the different ways in which you show us how to live this life daily through our Christ consciousness. We thank you, God, for your spirit living in us, through us, and as us, as we continue to fortify the roots that you have already placed on the inside of us. We thank you, God, for giving us the wisdom we need to work the word that you have provided for us. We Thank you, God, for Antioch Life Enrichment Center, every partner, every auxiliary, and our pastor, God, as she continue to lead us to you as we go within ourselves. We thank you, God, for her and her efforts, God, to love on us, to lead us, and to guide us to your truth in Christ's name. We thank you, God, for all that you are doing in this county, God. We thank you, God, for the people that you have set in place to be light, to be salt, to be the change as we change within ourselves. We thank you, God, for the evolution that is taking place within us. And we thank you, God, for the growth and the development. In Christ's name, amen. <laughs>